HVAC 360, episode number 11, Commissioning Certifications. Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Matt Nelson, to another edition of HVAC 360. I want to thank you if you're... uh a, uh, if you've listened to us before, I'd like to welcome you back. And if you're a new listener, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to welcome you uh, to kind of give you an overview before we go on. The primary focus is to share information about the built environment. Not only share my own information, my own experiences, but I want to be able to talk to people throughout the industry, whether they be engineers or manufacturers or owners or what have you. And today we're going to focus on commissioning certification. Now I've been through the process a couple of times, and so I want to kind of give you a uh, a point of departure, if you will, uh, for analyzing what's out there in the realm of commissioning certification. Today is going to be a very U.S. Fo- focused episode. I noticed this when I was writing it. Internationally, there are certifications out there. Uh, namely, there's going to be ASHRAE is going to have the uh, the commissioning process management professional. That's uh, as ASHRAE is an international organization. That is a international certification that you can get. Also. I know that uh, going through the NEB process, the National Environmental Balancing Bureau, uh, there were some Canadian firms there uh, taking that commissioning um, uh, certification at that time when I was there. So I don't know whether or not it's a, uh, uh, you know, a qualified certification in Canada, but I'm just telling you what, what my experience has been. There was Canadians there, eh, don't you know? And uh, they were taking the test. So... Going through this a little bit more, um, in general, let's let's start start off with a ten thousand foot view. In the United States, there's about seven currently seven certifications that I'm aware of uh, for building commissioning. Now, this is basic buildings. Um, these are uh, it's a pretty pretty complete list. I don't I haven't seen any others out there, and and I'm pretty confident that there's no more than seven. But I always can be wrong. So if I am, give me a call and uh, let me know. Uh, you can send some uh, some feedback at uh, buildingchatter at gmail dot com, uh, or you can uh, Twitter me at buildingchatter. Either one will uh, will get to me. If there's some international certifications, I would I would love to find out any more international certifications that that people have uh, or that uh, that are out there. Uh, I would love to be able to share that with the rest of our community uh, and not just uh, not just focus on on the U.S. So. The commissioning, the seven uh, commissioning certifications. What I want to be able to do is go through the seven certifications. This is not, uh, again, a definitive explanation on each one of these, but I just want to offer a little bit, uh, a little nugget uh, for each one of these, and I'll offer you a point of departure for your own exploration. Obviously, uh, when we talk about uh, some of the information you'll need, I will list the. Uh, uh, information about the websites. I'll put that in the show notes. So if you go to buildingchatter.com, I'm going to, under episode 12, you'll see the uh, the different websites for the seven certifications. So which one of these is best? When you take a look at it holistically, which one do you want to start off with? Uh, I'm going to kind of back away from that uh, question because no one certification fits uh, everybody. Everybody has their own special needs, whether it be an individual certification, a, a certification for when you're just getting started, a certification for you know somebody who's been in the commissioning business a while, um, so or com- somebody who wants to get a a commissioning certification uh, for the entire firm. There's there's each one of these kind of has a a different fit, and we'll kind of go through these as I explain it a little bit more. Um, now, it, most of these. Uh, in general, will give you uh, what I like to call the the commissioning process. They're all kind of describing the process. Now, if you go through the the learning, the testing, um, you're going to 
pretty much know the commissioning process backwards and forwards by the time you get your certification. Um, not to say that you're going to know all the net, all the, the the nuts and bolts, all the details of what it takes to be a commissioning agent or commissioning authority, um, but you will know about the commissioning process. So, having said that, uh, there are a couple different. Uh, disciplines to keep in mind. And none of these, uh, I think, with the exception of, of the NEB certification, uh, break these out in uh, any detail. But as far as uh, different commissioning um, specialties you can have, if, you, if, you, if you're not even aware that there are different specialties among the cert- commissioning certification, here's, here's the, pretty much the basic ones. If you're getting, getting into commissioning, you're pretty much going to start with HVAC. HVAC is the number one problem in new buildings. HVAC is going to be 80% of what people think commissioning is uh, that is out there today. So if you're, if you're focused on HVAC, if that's, if, that's what, uh, you know, if that's where you're specializing in, that's fantastic. All these certifications are going to really fit well with what you're going to do. Um, next on the list as far as you know, problems with new buildings is the envelope. Uh, envelope is a very specialized uh, commissioning certification. Um, again, none of these you get you know, certified in building envelope um, with the exception of NEB, but uh, building envelope is uh, uh, a certification uh, that is, uh, or building, the building envelope commissioning rather, is an important certification um, because of the interactions it has with the uh, HVAC system and the different things that they see with, uh, you know, air tightness and water infiltration. A lot of the problems that uh, people see in new buildings um, are with building envelope as well. Now there's, uh, you know, electrical plumbing, fire protection, you know, telecommunication security. You can specialize in each one of these, uh, but they're more of a, a secondary, uh, secondary uh, uh, commissioning class. So and now I'm going to kind of go through these. I'll, I'll step through. I'll give a, a overview on the the seven certifications um, that you can get, and then I'll kind of explain a little bit more um, in a kind of a bulleted format uh, about each one. First off, there's going to be the ASHRAE certification. This is the CPMP, the, cert- the Commissioning Process Management Professional. This is the one that ASHRAE had developed uh, back in, if I get the year right, uh, 2009. They did it in June of 2009 was the first time that they actually uh, offered it at the, uh, the summer meeting. Um, and uh, since then, um, it, uh, it, it, it has... Uh, uh, become available electronically. Um, there is the uh, American Energy en- or the Association of Energy Engineers (AEE). They have the uh, Certified Building Commissioning Professional. Um, AEE is one of those that uh, it also has the uh, Certified Energy Manager, Energy Auditor. Um, those are some of the other certifications that the Asso- Association of Energy Engineers has. Uh, the Building Commissioning Association uh, has the CCP, that's the Certified Commissioning Professional. Uh, in Wisconsin, the University of Wisconsin has a Qualified Commissioning Process Provider. Uh, the AABC, their, their commissioning group, uh, AABC is the uh, Associated, I get this right, the Associated, Associated Air Balance uh, I forget what the C stands for. Uh, company uh, consortium collaborative. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not. <laughs> excuse me. I'm not exactly. I'm not exactly sure. I just refer to them as the AABC. Typically in the U.S., there's going to be the AABC and the NEB, the National Environmental Balancing Bureau. Those are typically the two uh, testing and balancing. Uh, firms that are nationally recognized. So AABC has the commissioning group, um, and they have the certified commissioning authority. Uh, SMACNA has also jumped into the uh, the arena. They have the TA, what they call the TABB commissioning supervisor, and then of course NEB, the National Environmental Balancing Bureau, has the building systems uh, professional or Building Systems Commissioning Certified Professional. 
So those are the seven um, certifications that are out there. Now let's start back with uh, back with number one, um, ASHRAE, the Certified Process Management Professional. Again, June of 2009 was when it first debuted. Um, you can take this at one of the conferences, or you can also take it electronically. Uh, there is no review course uh, for this uh, certification. This is intended to be testing your knowledge. They're not going to teach you anything and then uh, have you take the test. This is simply simply a test. If you want to, re uh, I would suggest if you're interested in taking the ASHRAE certified um, or the commissioning process management professional, go take a look at the website. Um, there's a lot of good information there. There's a, a, a candidate guidebook that kind of gives you an explanation or a breakdown of all of what you're going to see on the test, as well as any resources that you may want to reference. Obviously, Guideline Zero, ASHRAE Guideline Zero, is going to be one of the uh, the main ones that they're going to want, uh, want you to look at. Now, there is, uh, for this, uh, going to be educational maintenance required. Uh, typically, most of these do have the educational maintenance uh, component to them. Uh, simply, and it makes a, makes a whole lot of sense, is that if you're going to be a certified commissioning professional, that you're going to want to uh, upkeep your knowledge as things change from time to time. It's not something that you achieve and then that you let slide. So uh, sim similarly to uh, being a professional engineer, there's going to be some, um, you know, either PDHs, CEUs, whatever, you know, I'm just calling it, you know, some educational maintenance as a generic, uh, generic phrase. So there is going to be a fee for ASHRAE and uh, a f fee for reach certification, and that's going to take place every three years. Now, moving on to AEE CBCP, uh, this is one of the first ones that I got. Uh, it was uh, pretty much a, a standard for our company that uh, when you became a, a commissioning agent, this is the one that you, you sat for. Um, they do have, uh, it's, it's uh, the way it's formatted, uh, there's a course. You take a course, and it's followed up by a test. This is The tests are only given at the courses, so you can't take it electronically, um, online, or anything like that. You need to attend the courses from AEE in order to take the test and pass the test. Again, there is educational maintenance required, and there is a fee for recertification, again, every three years, just like ASHRAE. For the building system, for the building commissioning association, um, the BCXA, um, they have the certified commissioning professional. This is actually only offered on computer. Um, they suggest uh, that you possibly uh, might consider taking the BCA uh, uh, University Madison University of Wisconsin Madison five day class as a good. Um, uh, as a as a possible option to prep for the uh, the exam, but it's not mandatory. You don't have to take that. Uh, with the BCXA um, certified commissioning professional, the educational maintenance obviously again is required, and uh, again it's uh, there's a fee that recertifies every three years. So those are those are th the first three, and they're all pretty much very similar. I guess the the only difference is being exactly where you take the test, if there's a course that's associated with it, um, and uh, I know that the uh, the certified commissioning professional that uh, that exam that qual to qualify for the exam uh, is quite a bit of effort. So that's one one that I would consider one of the more elite certifications uh, that's out there. Um, moving on, the uh, University of Wisconsin, the uh, Qualified Commissioning Process Provider. Um, this is a uh, basically the uh, uh, this is the first credential. Um, and it gets a little bit, <laughs> this is a little bit confusing. Bear with me for, for a moment here. Essentially, what, what happens is that you take a course and you take the first test. Now, this basically um, makes you a commissioning process provider. Now, the catch here, so your first credential is with a basic course followed by a test. 
and it's only offered at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, within five years, you have to upgrade or recertify, um, or you're going to have to retest, and you must recertify every f five years after that. Um, and there is a fee for the recertification. The thing about this is, is, is um, how these courses work is that you qualify with your first, um, your first test, and then there's three different variations of an upgrade that you can have. And I'm not going to go into it here because it, you know, <laughs> describing it verbally is, is, is a little bit complicated. It's probably a little bit easier if you read the materials that they have available at their website, and that would probably give you a better idea. But it's kind of like a two-stage process. You take your initial certification, and then you can get an upgraded certification within five years after that if you meet the qualifications. So those four are pretty much the individual certifications. Um, and again, anywhere from recertification from three to five years. The next three um, with the AABC commissioning group, uh, the TAB, um, TAB certified, and the NEB building system commissioning. These three are more for the firm. The uh, the ACG the ACG is a little bit a little bit unique um, in that you can't be a contractor you can't be associated with a contractor um, you know I work for a design build contractor I can't even take the test I can't qualify to become an ACG they're strictly gearing it towards architects engineers um, independent contractors they really were independent consultants shall we say I won't even use the word contractor independent consultants independent third parties uh, to be commissioning agents so the commissioning group is actually separate from the uh, main AABC you know everything it's kind of an independent sister organization they have their own website they're actually you know commissioning.org is the uh, is their URL but um, that's the only way you can call and qualify um, is if they if you if you uh, if you're not a contractor if you don't install anything or service anything so they have you know how they qualify um, is you have a course followed by a test it's optionally offered online. Um, they have a uh, educational maintenance required, again, similar. I think that's similar for all of them. And there is annual fees for recertifications uh, that are required. So annually, you're going to have to uh, plunk out a big chunk of change um, for these kind of firm-type certifications. Now comes the mystery, uh, the, the mystery certification. Most people don't, uh, don't really recognize this, but of the three, uh, the three firm type uh, commissioning certifications, this is the most, by far the most mysterious. I, I, I didn't have any information uh, for this a couple of weeks ago, uh, but I started really digging in and, and checking out the different different websites that are associated with this, and I finally got to a point where I think I understand a little bit about it. I'm not completely sure about it, um, but again, this is kind of the the um, the tab testing and testing adjusting balancing bureau. This is a SMACNA uh, derivative, and um, they have the TAB, T-A-B-B, commissioning supervisor. Now, I'm not exactly sure uh, about this, but as far as I know, this is how it goes. It appears to be a course followed by a test similar to the ACG. Um, the firm must be a TAB certified contractor and must have a supervisor. I'm not sure of the, the cost for this. Uh, but similar to the other ones, educational maintenance um, is required, and I, I would imagine that there are renewal fees and, and probably on an annual basis. That's how most of these uh, firm uh, certifications work. So that's about as much information. I do have the website, and again, that's going to be on the show notes uh, on uh, buildingchatter.com. So take a look at that if you're interested in becoming a uh, tab uh, a TAB commissioning supervisor for a, a TAB certified contractor. So the last one 
uh, is the NEB Building System Commissioning Certified Professional. This is the one that one of the ones that I hold, and I've been through. So the the thing about this is is I, I find this to be the most uh, I, I wouldn't say elite, but it, it, it's, it's one of the more difficult ones to get. Again, you have to go through the process of becoming a NEB certified firm before you get anywhere. I mean, you can take the course, you can take the test and pass all that, but that really doesn't mean anything until you get your firm certified as a, uh, a building system um, commissioning provider. And so in, in, until you're a NEB firm, uh, taking the course and the test really doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot. Um, not only that, but you have to have a supervisor um, qualified. So one of the things, the company must be a certified firm before, you know, it, it, it's, it's not an initial prerequisite. You can take the course, you can take the tests without being a NEB certified firm, but it's one of those things that... Um, because that's that's in fact that's the way I did it. I I took the test before I certified my firm. Then I got my firm certified, and uh, kind of, we kind of uh, went about it that way. But um, timing is a little bit essential uh, because obviously you only have a couple of years to get your your uh, uh, firm certified before that uh, uh, you know the testing wears out. The um, so if you have a NEB certified firm. Um, you must have a supervisor, and the supervisor must have taken and passed the BSC course, uh, followed by testing and followed by the testing, and separately passed the three written supervisor exams. Now, um, when we talk about becoming a, 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 a testing and balancing contractor, and this is a little bit different than a commissioning agent, but the testing and balancing contractor, they're going to have to have supervisors that have passed three written exams, and then they have to pass what they call practical exams, or they're more of a hands-on exam. Well, uh, in Neb's eyes, you don't need to take the practical, so you don't need the hands-on uh, to become a uh, certified commissioning firm for NEB, but you do have to, ha your supervisor has to have passed the three written exams, and they're, they're about two and a half hours, two and a half hours apiece. So they're kind of lengthy exams. So similar uh, to the rest of them, again, educational maintenance is required, and you're going to have to have ongoing annual fees. So in a nutshell, those are the seven certifications that you can get. Uh, again, uh, the TAB certification is, you know, I found a little bit of information on it, but there wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't abundant on the websites that I took a look at, but I did found a, find a little bit of information and um, uh, where the course is being offered and things like that. But as far as prices, that wasn't, that wasn't it. So, I guess what do you what do you do now? So you've went through all the trouble trouble of actually, you know, taking the courses, taking the exams, getting that knowledge, getting the certification. Now what do you do? Now, so you have the certification. Well, I think that uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to market it. You need to tell everybody that you know that hey, we're a certified firm. We're in it. This validates us. Uh, this is a big differentiator from uh, you know just somebody saying, "Yeah, I do commissioning." Um, this is telling somebody, "Okay, you know what? I understand the process. You know, I've gone through the trouble of educating myself and and getting the certification." Um, so you need to 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 market that for all it's worth for your company. Other than that, you know, you really, you really. And, and this is what it boils down to because any of these certifications really aren't worth anything to anybody unless you can back it up with strong performance. Unless you can dedicate and keep your customers satisfied, they really don't, you know, they, they might be able to get you in the door uh, when you're qualifying for a job uh, or to differentiate you from a, a couple different other people. But really, when you, when you take a look at commissioning providers, and then this may be more to owners um, than anything else, um, if you're unsure of who to hire, uh, you really want to be able to look at their track record. 
uh, because with with any of these certifications, um, you know, it it it's the most important thing you can do um, is look at some references it, it, and look at, you know, whether or not their past customers are satisfied um, and, and, and just get good referrals like that. Um, you really need to be able to maintain, um, you know, as well for, you know, once you do get the certification, you got to maintain that educational uh, requirement, that continuing education, because, you know, without it, you know, again, just taking the test, that just learns about the process. Really, you need to keep learning. There's so much to learn about, you know, being a commissioning agent that you just need to keep learning any which way you can. Um, you know, part of part of why I'm doing this right now is just so I can share some of that information so you can learn a little bit more. You know, I've run into people who don't really understand what's out there as far as commissioning certifications go. And it just takes a little bit of legwork, but you know, I want to be able to say, "Hey, you know what? This this is what's out there. Use this as a point of departure, you know, and then just you know, grow your learning from here." So, I hope that was uh, beneficial to you. I hope you learned something, um, and uh, I would uh, appreciate. Again, any feedback, if you like this topic, if you didn't like the topic, if you found it useful, if you found it boring, or whatever, any feedback, I'd greatly appreciate it. Drop me a line at buildingx.co or uh, email me at matt at buildingx.co. Uh, you can also uh, find me on Twitter at buildingx. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Just, just let me know. I mean, we really appreciate those kind of people and, and we want to be able to have, share their experiences, uh, with the rest of the world. So, uh, again, I appreciate everybody listening. I think it's really, really great that, uh, we're, uh, we're building up to this and, uh, that's pretty much it. So until next time, know what you build and share what you know.